Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights. Last time we watched some uh, Hammer Horror movies, so let's discuss. Starting off, we watched uh, Horrors of Dracula. Um, originally called just Dracula in Britain, I believe. Br the British just called it Dracula, but it came to America as Horror of Dracula because the original Dracula was already... Like, like, the original Dracula was still playing in a couple theaters when this came to America, so... <laughs> you know, just so people didn't think it was the Bela Lugosi movie, they called it Horrors of Dracula in America, which... I think is a better title, because, you know... There's, there was already a classic movie called Dracula. Calling it Horrors of Dracula does help distinguish it. So, uh, in Horror of Dracula... Horror singular. I think I call it horrors sometime. Horror singular of Dracula. Um, this uh, a guy goes out to Dracula's castle, uh, much like the original film. Although this time he's uh, he he's come out to be a librarian. You know he's here to document Dracula's books, but he's secretly a vampire hunter who's. <laughs> Working with, well, not really a hunter, uh, the vampire studier, vampire scientist, vampirologist. <laughs> He's studying vampires uh, along with Dr. Van Helsing, but unfortunately, not long after he shows up, he's bitten by Dracula and becomes Dracula's servant. Um, so now it's up to Dr. Van Helsing to sort of save him, and by save him I mean kill him, and uh, defeat Dracula, and and free all of Dracula's, like, all, all the people Dracula has enslaved with his vampire powers. Um, I think I've said this before, this is probably my favorite adaptation of Dracula. It's just so much fun. There's... You know, lots of good vampire shit going on. Like, I was complaining last time that there there weren't enough vampire shenanigans. This is vampire stuff. They got a lot of vampire things going on in this movie. So I really enjoy that. Also, Christopher Lee as Dracula is just... Hmm. Oh. Perfect. He's perfect as Dracula. Um... <laughs> And I, I think it really helps that he actually doesn't say very much in this movie. I think he had, like, 17 lines. I, re I read somewhere he had not very many lines. Because um, he, he talks at the beginning of the movie. He talks to the main... Or, not the main character. I guess Van Helsing's the main character. But he talks to the guy who shows up at the beginning of the movie. And after that, he does not talk for the rest of the film. He just sort of... He looks at people, he makes sounds and noises, but it, it it gives him a very intimidating presence, right? Like, he walks into a room and just, like, looks at someone and they're like, All right, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do now. I love Christopher Lee. I love Christopher Lee in general, but specifically as Dracula. In, in general, Christopher Lee, fucking awesome. What a, like, one of the coolest damn actors ever. He's he's been in so much good shit. First off, you know he's in Lord of the Rings. Uh, he's in Gremlins Two: The New Batch. He's in all these Hammer horror movies. He is in a lot of real clunkers, but that's just what's gonna happen when you're Christopher Lee. <laughs> um, before he was an actor, he hunted Nazis. Like after after the end of the war, he hunted down a bunch of Nazis. Uh, it's it's a, like you know bring him in to be tried and and sentenced for their crimes. Um, and then he started a metal band in his 80s. He's, like, the oldest person to ever have, like, a Billboard Top 100 hit because he started a fucking metal band. And, like, a pretty fucking decent metal band, if I, if, if I can say so. So, yeah, Christopher Lee, fucking awesome. Love the man. Also, uh, Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing, of course, also in this movie is Dr. Van Helsing. Um, I, I like Peter Cushing. He's a really good actor. Um, of course, uh, famous as Grand Moff Tarkin in Star Wars. 
Um, took took a little while to get Christopher Lee in Star Wars, and he wasn't in any of the good ones, unfortunately. But you know, at least he was in Star Wars. Just just a really fun movie, a really enjoyable movie. Um, there's like. Like, there is a level of cheese to it that you kind of got to accept, but, you know, it's a monster movie from the 50s, so it's like, yeah, I am forgiving of, like, the cheese in this movie, because it is so fun, so enjoyable. It's, it's not a problem at all. The cheese adds to the charm of this film. It is an incredibly charming movie. It's, it's... Probably my favorite adaptation of Dracula. I, I like it more than the Universal Dracula. Just honestly, I like this better than the Universal Dracula. Not by much. It's not it's not a wide margin. It's just like it's a lot more fun than the Universal movie. I I this this is a fun movie. This is you know you put it on and it's like oh yeah good time guaranteed good time. Um. Probably my favorite Hammer horror movie. I, mm, at least my favorite of their adaptations of, of like, classic Universal monster movies. Right. I, I like it better than any of the Frankenstein or Mummy or, or Werewolf movies they did. Um, I, don't, I don't know how it would stack up against, like, Quatermass in the Pit, but... Mm, I, I might still pick this over Quatermass in the Pit. It'd be a hard call. I mean... Right on the back of the box here, there's a quoted someone, the best of the Hammer Horror series. And it's like, hey, yeah, yeah, okay, that's not an unpopular opinion. Most people think this is the best of the Hammer Horror movies. Um, this is the Warner Brothers Archive collection. Um, much like uh, Curse of Frankenstein was. Not nearly as many bonus features as the Curse of Frankenstein one. I also have it... Uh, on DVD, a DVD four pack, but and we're definitely gonna watch at least two of the other three movies in this pack. But this one I have on Blu-ray because it's good enough to deserve a Blu-ray. Dracula eighty nineteen seventy two, fun, but I I don't know if I need the Blu-ray for that. Um, and I have not seen Dracula has risen from the grave or taste the blood of Dracula, so. Put a pin in those. We might be coming back to them. And speaking of Hammer Horror box sets, I, I suppose let's move on to the next film, the second film in the Hammer Horror franchise, uh, Brides of Dracula, plural. Um, there's a lot of Bride of movies, all of which parodying uh, Bride of Frankenstein, right? Because there was Bride of Frankenstein, so then there was also, like, Bride of Reanimator, and Bride of Chucky, and I guess that's probably the only two I can think of off the top. Oh, well, there was, like, <laughs> there's Ed Wood's Bride of the Monster, so, you know, some Bride of movies. But this is Brides of Dracula, who are apparently characters from the actual book. Um, so, so... Closer to the source material with this one, because I don't think Bride of Frankenstein was based on anything Mary Shelley had written. Despite uh, the movie opening with Mary Shelley telling the story. I don't think it was based on anything from the books, but Brides of Dracula is. They were characters in the book. Uh, <laughs> so, Brides of Dracula doesn't have Dracula in it. That's a problem. It's the there's this uh like prince who's like chained up by his mother in a castle because he's a vampire and this like young lady is coming through town because she's on her way to like a ballet school, I think. I want to say ballet school, maybe fashion school, but she's on her way to an academy for girls is the point, an all girls academy. And she, she stops overnight in this town that has a vampire in it. And she she gets invited to stay the night at the vampire's house by his mother. 
and she frees the vampire man, and he goes around and starts biting people. And then Van Helsing shows up, and he's like, well, better take care of this vampire, and all of the women he's turning into vampires. Um, and it, it seems pretty clear that the vampire was supposed to be Dracula, but apparently Christopher Lee turned this down because he didn't want to get typecast as Dracula. And then he spent the next two decades making Dracula movies. Like, he... Not just in Hammer Horror Productions. He is in a lot of Hammer Horror movies as Dracula. But he also started appearing in non-Hammer Horror movies as Dracula. And it's like... He didn't want to be typecast as Dracula for this movie. But then you made a bunch of other way worse movies. And... I'm I'm going to be honest. Like there there was stuff I liked about this movie, right? There's good stuff in this movie. I think what it really needed to push it over the edge into being like something I would recommend is if the vampire in this movie was Christopher Lee as Dracula, right? That would elevate this movie enough to be like, you know what? This is a recommend. This is a good movie. As is, it's like, eh. like maybe if you're a fan of the Hammer Horror movies, it's it's maybe worth checking out. But I don't know. It's 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 really missing something without Christopher Lee, because the guy they've got playing the vampire does not have the presence of Christopher Lee. He's some like he's he's some like clean-looking Hollywood boy, you know, I called him Count Wiener. His name is, like, Count Minor? Something like that. It sounded pretty similar to Wiener, and he is just a fucking Wiener. That's, he's, he's like, oh, I, it's me, I'm Dracula! And it's like, no, fuck you. Fuck you. He's not, he's not even named Dracula. He's, he's not, he, he didn't take over the role from Christopher Lee. He's playing a totally different character. But it's Brides of Dracula for some reason. Figure that one out. At, at one point, um, Van Helsing, who is still played by Peter Cushing. It's still Peter Cushing as Van Helsing. And I think that works. I think... Like, like, that's the only thing it has to tie it to the other Dracula movies, but, you know, at least Peter Cushing's still in it as Van Helsing. Um, he, there's a part where he's proceeding over, there's a part where he's sort of looking over the ways they're burying the women, and he's like, we, we gotta make sure, you know, they're not gonna come back, and the guy in the church is like, uh, well, I'm not really listen. We're, I'm I'm not really worried about it. You know, vampires aren't real. Who cares? And then later, one of these women comes back from the grave. There's like two inches of dirt over her casket. She just like pushes the lid off her casket, and it's like, oh look, I just I just pushed the dirt off the top of my casket along with it. It's like. Why would you bury someone that close to the surface? It's not even worth it at that point. You might as well just have the casket sitting on the ground. It's it's literally like inches of dirt. I don't think it's even a full foot of dirt. She just pushes it off. Yeah, ki kind of silly in parts. Um, kind of ridiculous that it doesn't have Christopher Lee in it. Um, there is stuff I like, you know, Peter Cushing's still good, and there there are vampire shenanigans. Vampire shit happens in this movie, so not, not the best, but also not the worst. There's stuff to enjoy about it. Again, if if you're into like the hammer horror movies, especially the Dracula franchise, maybe, maybe, but mm, it's it's okay. It's fine. I'm not going to go further than that. 
I've, I've shown the two movies in this set that made it onto the cover. Curse of the Werewolf and uh, Brides of Dracula. It's just Peter Cushing as Van Helsing. Because Dracula's not in the movie. Speaking of movies that don't have Dracula in them. Um, Frankenstein. Revenge of Frankenstein. Which I for some reason called Frankenstein's Revenge at the end of the last video. My bad. Revenge of Frankenstein. The second film in the Frankenstein franchise. Um, they do sort of almost explain how... Dr. Frankenstein escaped the gallows at the end of the first movie. They show him going to the gallows, and then later on it's like, oh, they killed the priest instead of Frankenstein. How he pulled that switcheroo off, up to audience interpretation, but there was at least like, oh, there was a switcheroo, so he survived the gallows from the end of the first movie. Um, which was something I was worried about, so... Yeah, it it does flow, like, like, it flows from the first movie into this movie. It does not flow into Evils of Frankenstein. <laughs> the ending of this movie and the beginning of Evils of Frankenstein completely disconnected. N nothing in common with each other, which is about what I expected. That's sort of something you gotta take with these, like, old monster <laughs> movies. You know, not the best continuity. So, Revenge of Frankenstein, Frankenstein has escaped the gallows, and he runs off to a new city as Dr. Stein, and that's that's the brilliant name he came up with. Instead of Frankenstein, from now on, he is Dr. Stein. If you were trying to escape the name Frankenstein, because at that point, like, you know, Frankenstein's legend, Frankenstein's... A wanted criminal. He was supposed to have died. If you were really trying to hide that you were Frankenstein, why would you pick a name so close to Frankenstein? Um, so he's Dr. Stein, and he's working at this, uh... He, he starts, like, a... What's a, a clinic for for the poor, right? You know, he's treating, like, street bums and whatnot. Uh, for, like, either for free or for, like, a significantly reduced price so that they won't have to go to the big, expensive doctors, which kind of upsets the big, expensive doctors, but uh, they do agree, like, all right, we'll give him a chance. He can be part of, like, the League of Doctors. Um, and, and one of the guys from the League of Doctors gets involved with him because he's like, no, listen, I recognize you. You're Frankenstein. I'm not gonna tell the other guys, just let me in on whatever it is you're doing. And it, as it turns out, what he's doing is amputating body parts from poor people and using them to build a new body for, you know, to, to like, bring life to. Although, uh, this one's a little more body switchy. Um, he's, he's not... He's not creating a whole new creature. He he created this body, and then there's this uh, guy he works... F or the, this guy who works for him at the clinic who's got, like, a bum arm and a bum leg, and he's like, Oh, I'm building him a new body. I'm going to transfer his brain into this new body. Um, and he does, and at first it's pretty good, but then, you know, slowly the body starts to reject the brain, and he... he turns crazy and starts killing stuff. He's, he's running around the town killing people. Uh, and, and of course, at some point, he, he lets slip that Dr. Stein is actually Dr. Frankenstein. And then everyone's like, oh god, it's Dr. Frankenstein, the one we didn't want. Uh, so, very qu quickly, like, you know, like, angry mob forms, they're coming for Frankenstein, but this guy who's been helping him the whole time puts him on the operating ta table, pops his brain out, and sticks it in a new body, and then goes, oh, look, here's Dr. Frankenstein, he's dead, no need to worry about that anymore, but meanwhile, he's, he's put the brain into a new body, which weirdly has Dr. Frankenstein's face... 
Like, there's no point where he... He doesn't remove Frankenstein's whole head, just his brain. But the new body has Frankenstein's face. So... What's up with that? Did they just find a guy who looked exactly like Dr. Frankenstein? It's still Peter Cushing playing him. Whatever the case, he pops the brain in the new body, and then they move off to a new city where he starts going by Dr. Franken. So yeah, this movie's a little silly. Um... Again, stuff I like about it. I, I would very much put this in the same category as Brides of Dracula. Like, stuff I liked about it, silly stuff. Overall, I feel like it's mostly going to be for, like, fans of Hammer Horror. Um, not, not like, my strongest recommendation, but eh. It's okay. It's fun. It's got its moments. Um, Peter Cushing returns as uh, Frankenstein, although, you know, uh... Christopher Lee's not in this one either. He played the monster in the first one, but the monster's dead now, and the creatures in this movie, it's because he, he does, like, two different people's bodies. But they're very normal-looking, which was, is kind of disappointing because, like I said, I really like how gross the uh, Christopher Lee Frankenstein looks. So, yeah, kind of disappointing there wasn't, like, a... a gross, freaky-looking creature like there was in the first movie. But still better than giant styrofoam head Boris Karloff ripoff from Evils of Frankenstein. This is a better movie than Evils of Frankenstein. That is without a doubt. Yeah, it's an interesting follow-up. It's okay. Uh, I don't really have that much to say about it, I guess. Um, there's There's... Not too much about it that really stuck out to me outside of, like, the main plot. I did have a debate with one of my friends about whether or not, like, if you take a brain from one body and put it in another body, does the first body count as part of a film's body count, right? Because that is a dead body. There is a dead body. It just happened the person's brain is still alive somewhere else. I think I counted it. I think I counted it. We've had a disappointingly low body count so far. Godzilla's the only one with, like, any substantial deaths in it. Most of them have come in, like, single digits. Also, b because we watched two Dracula movies in a row, in this movie someone refers to Frankenstein as uh, a baron. It's like, oh, baron, I see you're alive and well. And my friend's like, wait, Baron, got a demotion from Count? And I'm like, this is Frankenstein, not Dracula. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, Frankenstein's a Baron, not a Count. Revenge of Frankenstein. Eh. So, last week I asked, what was your favorite Dracula adaptation? Mine's Horror of Dracula. No one answered. I... It's not that this show is consistently getting next to no views. It's just, like, every couple of episodes, there's one that just, like, doesn't do well. You know? Like, this episode isn't gonna do well, but then the next two or three are gonna do fine, and then you're gonna get another one that doesn't do well, and no one's gonna leave any comments. It's, it's, it seems very arbitrary. The analytics on this series are inconsistent. So, I do have a fun question this week, but first I did want to ask a bit of a housekeeping question. Uh, how committed are you guys to following along with these movies at home? Uh, because I, I don't assume anyone has watched all of the movies I recommended, but I do try to recommend movies that are like, easy enough to get a hold of, but, uh, next movie night is gonna fall during Band Films Week, and I just recently, uh, like back in March, The Devils was up on Shutter, and I got a quick little screen recording of The Devils, so now I can show The Devils to my friends. But, 
God damn, Ken Russell's The Devils is so fucking hard to get a hold of. It's, there's no DVD release, and it's streaming nowhere. Like, when it pops up on streaming services, it's, like, gone almost instantly. So, my question is, how do you feel about me showing The Devils, since it's gonna be hard for you guys at home to find a copy of... Um, I'm I'm pretty committed to showing the devils unless I get like overwhelming reactions of like no don't talk about it I'm gonna talk about the devils I do have a fallback film but um, I'm probably just gonna show the devils <laughs> and unless there are major objections to that anyways um, my fun question this week is. What's a movie that reminds you of summer? What is, what's a summer movie to you? Because it's summer, and we're going to do an ice cream horror triple feature. Uh, bet you can't figure out what the first movie is. Phantasm. Uh, I fucking love Phantasm. If you, if you can't tell by the giant fucking metal ball... Super Deluxe Edition Blu-ray I have. It's it's all five movies, not just Phantasm. To be clear, I would not have gotten all of this for one movie. It's it's all five Phantasm movies, but we're only going to watch the first one. Um, the, the most quintessential entry in ice cream related horror. After that, we're going to watch The Ice Cream Man, starring Clint Howard. Promised we were going to watch this earlier this year? Here it is, Clint Howard as the Ice Cream Man. And finally, the only other ice cream related horror movie probably, Larry Cohen's The Stuff. <laughs> We're gonna, the, the first Larry Cohen film we've looked at. I haven't seen The Stuff, so I'm very interested. I have heard things about The Stuff. Not really positive or negative. I've, it's weirdly positive and negative things from, like, the same people. It's like, it's really silly, but it's also fucking stupid. But that's exactly what we like here on this show, isn't it? So, yeah, Ice Cream Triple Feature. Phantasm, Ice Cream Man, The Stuff. Until then, uh, I'm Matt. Have some ice cream. <laughs>